this morning. Thankfully, we also have a number of users who are here, and they're going to take this even further. They're going to share their journeys in these different environments, and uh, they're going to be able to, to help us um, gain some insight into how companies are making these decisions today. And first up, we're going to be hearing from GE. So let's, let's hear from GE. The biggest challenge we face is the complicated world that we live in and that need to deliver results in uncertain times. Which created this need for us to evolve and just be a different company. So connecting advanced technologies with software and analytics, that's a new GE and a digital industrial company of the future. But there has to be a willingness to work together. And that takes a culture change. It's not just an incremental step. It's a pretty big leap. It started with our employees and our customers telling us that we could do a better job of working together. But how do you empower and inspire each other to make an impact for the customer? And then also, how do you get to that outcome in the simplest way? We want to learn and experiment and bring ideas, spirit, entrepreneurialism, in other words, passion. The collectiveness of this company is going to shape a GE where our employees right now it will have been part of something transformative, something special. Growth never stops. I want GE to be relevant all the time. That's what makes a difference to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Patrick Weeks. Thank you. I tell you, I've seen this video a couple times in preparation for this talk today, and it inspires me more and more every single time that I watch it. Uh, the change to become a digital industrial company is just really, really exciting. And it's important to be reminded that it begins with the business and ends with the business. So we as IT people need to be reminded of that periodically. Uh, there's really no place I'd rather be in GE today. If you take a look at the digital industrial blueprint for GE, my place is GE for GE. Uh, yes, it's about brilliant manufacturing. Yes, it's about improving our productivity as a company. But the other important thing to remember is that it is about a cultural transformation. It's about thinking differently, behaving differently, about reinventing the very way that we deliver IT services today. And it's only when we accomplish that that we'll be able to achieve GE for customers and GE for the world. So for my space over the last couple of years, I've been in charge of migrating our healthcare enterprise applications to cloud. First, let's imagine our environment, a highly regulated environment, a, uh, an environment that has grown through acquisition. So that translates to a couple of interesting tidbits, right? Server sprawl, redundant applications, legacy applications, those applications that may be on the edge of their support cycle, right? How do you begin to attack that? Where do you even start? We've got tremendous infrastructure, and we're not an infrastructure company. We are a digital industrial company. So for us, we need to start with just a couple of key strategies. One, commitment. You have to have commitment throughout your organization, from IT leadership business leadership, the engineers who are going to migrate your applications, as well as the end users are going to be testing it. All those folks need to be at the table. And don't forget to invite security and compliance. Those aren't people you ask for permission later. They need to be at the table with you from the very beginning so that they can help enable your journey. Next, you need to have a set of problem solvers. I mean, those people who are so dedicated to solving technical challenges and they're so committed to your mission as champions that they will be there to help drive you to that next level. No cannot be an option for them. They need to be able to help those end users deliver their applications regardless of the platform that they reside in. These two strategies are brought together by the third, which is target the impossible. You have to have an impossible goal in order for you to be able to achieve what you're looking for. Without an impossible goal, it will not drive the creativity necessary. 
You will not build the capabilities necessary to go to the next level. And ultimately, volume in cloud is really, really where we need to be. That's when you're finally able to start pulling the levers that will give you the cost benefit that everyone speaks of. Now, for ourselves, healthcare, what was our impossible goal? 126 applications in the first year. And this is starting from this environment, no program, no IP in cloud, nothing. Let's just go to cloud, we said. And so some questioned whether or not we'd be able to reach that. My CTO questioned whether or not we'd be able to reach that, even until the very end. Um, when pigs fly, some would say. And they did. They did fly that year. Um, and it was, it was slow at first, but we finally really got the acceleration that set the stage for the following couple of years. 500 some applications migrated to cloud, representing 42% of our business application infrastructure. 600 applications retired, 49% footprint reduction in cloud. I mean, that center section, you need to fund those migrations, right? So you need to find ways to simplify your environment in order to be able to accomplish your goals. Uh, huge savings. And remember, we invited security and compliance to the table. 200 plus controls supporting security and compliance. This is where our folks, our IT leadership, our business leadership, the end users feel comfortable being in cloud. And it's really a great example of how business and IT can hand in hand drive this unrelenting pursuit to solving our challenges. So yes, public cloud is at the center of all of this, but our company definitely needed to consider a private hosted option for a couple of reasons, right? We needed to be able to access those internal applications. You can do that from public, but very complex. Why spend the time and money and effort trying to solve some of those challenges? Put it in private hosted, simplify your journey. Next, as much as we're considering 200 plus controls and security and compliance is on board, there's nothing like having a private hosted single tenant environment for you to be able to host your applications and give people that security for your most sensitive data. And then, of course, in that private cloud, you don't want to reinvent everything that you've been doing in public. You have to be able to leverage across those platforms, whichever cloud you're going to be in. So our solution, GIX, G Infrastructure Exchange, is what we named it. We always have to have a GE name. Uh, and it's a cloud, remotely managed private cloud as a service offered through Rackspace. We provided, provided this platform in November of last year. So we received that platform. We started to migrate some of our development environments to it. We started to do some performance testing. And then, of course, porting our automation from our public cloud space. And I reached out to one of my engineers a few days into this. And I said, how is testing going? And, uh, and he replied with this. This platform is made of awesome. Now, I, this, this guy is not easy to impress. This is like a ringing endorsement from this guy. Uh, he's going to find you know, the, the problem in anything so that we can help overcome it. But when he gave me this feedback, I felt comfortable that we'd be able to move uh, with our production, which we did eight days later. All the challenges and capability concerns, et cetera, that we had, the team worked through those because of the platform and because of this community in hours and days instead of weeks and months for a new platform. So over the next six weeks, 70 applications we moved by the end of the year, allowing us to accomplish our goal. So let's just quickly review some of those benefits. Reuse enabled our acceleration to cloud. We ported our bots, our build automation, everything over from public cloud. We implemented those directly into the OpenStack platform, and we were going. Secondly, seamless interaction with our provider. Someone actually needed to tell me that Rackspace was behind the scenes, because as we went live, all I know is that we had challenges and we're working through it, and there was no finger pointing. There were just people working together to try and accomplish those goals. And creativity and a flexible platform enabled us to do that. OpenStack allowed us to tailor our solution. We all would love to have Lego building blocks, right? Cookie cutter ways of being able to deliver our infrastructure. The reality is, as we go from yesterday 
to tomorrow, we have to have the ability to bridge some of those things, and so some flexibility is required. And lastly, open source, no lock-in. Haven't we paid enough to our primary partners over the years? If we're going to have a competitive IT solution for the future, uh, we need to uh, embrace platforms such as this. So I appreciate your time today to share our healthcare journey, and I hope you enjoy the conference.